So I'm going to talk about my general experience <clears throat> with the community members. And I want to first start by saying being an outsider uh, of Osera Set, you know, many people who are outsiders who study devotedly, go through initiation for years, there is an idea that Osera Set is, uh, or the people on Osera Set are these saints. I even had a elder in the Chicago community speak so highly, not just of the Shechem of Shechem, but speak about the people around him. He was just being logical and saying that the people around him are, they are highly developed spiritual people, making reference to Shechem, highly developed spiritual people, because to be around someone like that every day, you would just be, you know, this is what was shared with me. So you come in there thinking that everything and everybody is, you know, saints, and not that Osiris has to live up to people's misperceptions or perceptions or delusions, you know, but <clears throat> that definitely is a sentiment that is on the outside. Now, my reading for functioning and conducting myself in the Hebrew Tear, New York, is Heru Hetep 23 and a 62. That reading had to play out, as all readings do, and still playing out. You know, one of the lines, one of the lines in 23 states that your, your receptivity to the danger is what opens you up for attack. There was another line that said the danger cannot be avoided. And the last line that says, you know, by living truth, you will overcome the slander. By strengthening your health, you will overcome the disease. And that, and this is the E. Jing praxis that he, that, that he wrote, that Ron Nefron then wrote. And that uh, those who see others as their competition can never really truly build a solid foundation in life. Now, I read this for years, looked at it, kept reflecting on it, kept meditating on it. And it really wasn't until I looked at another interpretation of that hexagram that really put everything in stone for me in terms of that hexagram speaking about deception and mirrors. And, you know, there's so much psychic you know, with all the yin energy, so much undercurrent of things that are going on. And I think that that reading was partially talking about my health, obviously, you know, because once you have a, when you have a, your immune system is governed by, primarily governed by yang energy. And when you have that energy, you're less likely to be undermined or to be affected by the negative energy or thoughts coming from others. I was coming situation of really having some yarn problems or having some health issues and things like that. And and of course, the receptivity in the reading was my receptivity, just wanting to be in the group, wanting to be accepted, wanting to be in this place that I thought was my, was the goal, was like kingdom come. Like I've been working really hard, meditating, you know, just wanting to share with people who talk about the same things and have the same values, or at least yeah. I thought they had the same values. And you thought that the place would be a place to nourish and strengthen you, yeah. you know, health-wise, spiritually, yeah. and all of those things. Yeah, all, all of those things. And the general, the general uh, experience overall has been one of isolation, one of you know like it was almost like there was an energy to push me out and to those members especially the men right and i'm not gonna say that everybody was like that there were like i would probably say there were a few people who were very who were welcoming is what i'm saying like the, the welcoming energy really was there were a few people who were very welcoming and i want you to know how thankful I am for that. You were truly a light inside of that darkness that was there from the other people. Now, I'm coming in here thinking that, you know, I have to serve, I have to give, I have to follow counsel. This is what it is to be a truly be a community member. And there's no welcoming community. There's none of that, those things. It's just me observing, me paying attention. I'm volunteering at Cheffa. I'm volunteering at the retreat. You know, I'm coming in, I'm following counsel. These are the things that he said make a good member, right? And but still, there's this never really truly being accepted. And you have people who make external gestures 
right? And they think because they smile at you, they think because they say, hey, you can hit me up anytime, that they're truly being um, helpful. And they don't even know that you already see the deception. You've already been alerted to the deception that is taking place. And it didn't all happen right away. And part of it was my own, like, nah, I want this to be my friend. Or I want this because this, this is, you know, they're supposed to be my friends, you know? But meditating, my ship's, my Shep Sue informing me, okay, this is what's going down here. Going back to the reading, you know, yeah. your reading talking about slander. 62, a lack of resource or a lack of support going on here. Um, the, you know, doing readings specifically on how to function with specific people, you know, on their intentions. And it's just like, if you do a reading and you get a dark deceased on somebody's intentions towards you, but that person's smiling, hey man, you can call me anytime. And then it got to such a social situation that this group of men, you know, externally they would say hello, or externally they'd be like, yeah, brother, da, 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 da. or one on one, or one or one on one. But you know, one on one they all would act different, right? Everybody wants to be my friend. For the most part, everybody's cool. For the most part, 90% of the time. It was usually when they get together that you feel that kind of like, you know, that undercurrent. You see certain things that are happening. And it's just like, with well, the way I grew up and where I come from, that kind of deception or that kind of behavior is something you don't just ignore. So now I have the experience. I have the readings backing it up. I have the people's words backing it up. You know, so, you know, to you guys that are watching it, when you did invite me to something, you know, I'm not saying I did a reading on every single thing. When you did invite me to something, you know, I already knew what time it was. And when you. How do I say? When you think that just smiling to somebody or even offering it and one particular brother, more than one brother, maybe like two brothers actually did actually come out and help me with something, you know? And and I'm sure that would be their argument to like, no, I was did this, I did this for this brother. And, and my response to that, my analogy is that if somebody, you know, you, you have 10 interactions with them and on two interactions, they feed you, give you really good food because you're hungry. They feed you really good. And then the other eight interactions that stabbing you, smacking you, kicking you in the butt, kicking you in your legs. Are you going to say that overall that this has been a wonderful relationship? You know, are you yeah. going to say that that's your friend, that they really care about you? Even, you know, when we talking about the Ramaharu situation, it was literally like, what, one or two families reached out to us? And said, hey, we're really sorry for what happened to you. Yeah. You know, the other people, the other guy, you didn't hear anything. And it was almost like there was a gag order that was out there. Like, don't talk about this. So it's like something that's really serious. And then I see you, but I'm supposed to think you're my friend. And to talk it, about basketball and, you know, right. nothing. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, so the, the, the reason why it was so challenging for me is because I wanted to be accepted and... And to be fair, like, I was putting that pressure on you because I was convinced that, like, you know, in order for me to be, you know, the light of my Shepsu, like, I need to really, you know, not only be in this place, but just make it better and just be very devoted to, like, furthering the mission, the cause. And, like, so I put a lot of pressure on you that like, listen, this is where we're going to raise our children. This is what we're going to do. And the people and, who would be around our children. And <clears throat> the people who would be around our children. Yeah, so like a lot of that pressure, I do, you know, take accountability for putting that pressure on you and just understand that like where I was coming from, just, you know, similar to you with your incarnation, me really just feeling like me having a successful life and, mm -hmm. you know, really honoring you know my chef sue because you you know that's something i, I talk about all the time Absolutely. um that that's where that was coming from you know yeah. and i i've apologized for it and i know that you know we have our healing we'll continue to heal from everything that's happened but yeah, yeah i don't want to make it seem like you were just putting this pressure on yourself i, I was yeah. putting pressure on you like listen and, I, and also there was pressure coming from the community but it, it, it was a it was like a catch-22, damn if you do, damn if you don't kind of 
pressure where some of these brothers, when they would call and make references to hanging out, I, I would already know that they're going to start saying he's antisocial or they're going to start saying that he's like this or he don't want it. But it's just like, why would I want to be around people who are going to psychically or send all that negative energy for me? And, you know, at a, you know, at another time, you know, I'll maybe reveal specific situations. You know, I would, would watch it in my eye or be an empath or whatever you know, and studying medical Qigong or energy medicine and the training that you go through, you know, you become even more sensitive to energy. And there's nothing like backing it up, you know, with a reading. And I would say most Sundays that I would go into the head and the tear, I would leave with a headache, you know? Yeah. And usually those headaches, sometimes for me, at my sensitivity is I would get a headache when that negative energy is really coming at you, you know? And yeah. a particular brother who thinks that, who, who's helped me before, but thinks that he's just been the greatest to me, he doesn't even know that, you know, one time we went to go do something for the head and the tear. And this is a strong brother, this is a young brother, strong brother, and strong in chi and strong in body. I had a migraine for about three days after hanging out with him because we drove to where we had to go, you know? And, and that's another issue that I have with those Sarah set and the irresponsibility and what I'm calling corrupt, starting from the leader down. You're opposition, right. opposition, you know, or competition or whatever is a part of my incarnation objective. I'm gonna have those differences, Tahuti differences from other people. And it's a part of God's plan for me to tap into something and walk and do what God needs, needs me to do. So to add to just the negative energy that I was getting, that that unwelcoming energy, it it also, you know, you can tell when someone is interested in the woman you're with. And a lot of the negative energy really wasn't from the women, it was from the men, and I mean Shekamu. Like I said, it seemed like a lot of men were lusting, which was adding to some of the issues that I was having. I was like, man, all these men are lusting. You know, Shechem, there's a Shechem who made a statement that if you were, if you were, if I was younger, you wouldn't be single. And it's just like, but none of y'all are protecting her. None of y'all standing back and watching this man having quote unquote sympathy and calling him my odd love for this person while she's being violated, you know, and other women, you know, are being violated. So as I was talking about the negative energy coming towards me and how that can really jack you up or hold you up, not just with health, but seeing how that was actually impacting the finances, but I didn't want to make any guesses. So I went to God, you know, and my reading on improving my finances 2019, which is like pretty much the first full year that I was actually in Osiris said New York, the reading was Wajet Tem, I'm sorry, Dark Deceased Temaat, Wajet Hatep 11 into 36, and the line talked about clicks and stuff like that in time of prosperity. Now I'm wondering, well, I'm not a part of a click, you know? Yeah. And the 36 is there, and I'm like, well, I'm not unreceptive to truth because I'm following counsel. I went to my Bazi counsel, I'm doing readings on different careers. I mean, I got pages on, you know, pay books on jobs and stuff like that, you know, uh, yeah. to find the right career. So who is this talking about? Later that year, we got our counselor. She told me to do a reading, you know, has to comment on the energies governing my success and getting a job to assist and supporting my family. Nekabet Temma'at to Hootie Hatep, 42 into 36. The 36 comes up, you know, again. And during that counsel, you know, my write-up, I wrote just for my meditation, just for me meditating on it a lot, that there is negative energy coming from the members and for people who profess to know about the psychic side of life, you know that if you can send negative energy to somebody, not only can you harm them, but you can jack them up or create blockages. And I believe that this is confirmed by a lot of the readings. Also, you know, getting back to our relationship reading, the we both had Geb Tim Chayez as the first card. When we, when this we, wasn't our marriage reading. This was our, first, our first. first getting together. Yeah. 44 hexagram. And we were counseled that 44 is usually the usurpation, somebody usurping the place of God. Now we go and we do our readings. We do our meditations. You know, um, we meditate. I go get counsel and ask for counsel 
for my ships. So we realize at, at this point that that 44 and that usurpation that is happening is co that's coming from the environment. Like at first we we're like, oh, it's health, right? It's you know, yeah, it's and just there, strengthening ourselves. Yeah, and there was and there was some health. There was a little bit of health. And then we thought, oh, it's just the finances. But it's like, no, we did that reading before I ever left my job. We had combined at 150K and we would be making more plus investments and all those things. So it can't be that. So who is the Geb Tim? And it pretty or much- what is the Geb Tim? Or what is the Geb Tim? Yeah. And it's pretty much the thought that this community would be so supportive right. of our union, so supportive of us being together. You know, our reading on- Getting married in the head and the tear was a Herakuti Atep, 50th hexagram line two, which which the line two speaks of that the enmity and everything like that and malice coming towards you, you know, cannot defeat you, you know, if you live if you live truth. Yeah. Something to say? No, I mean that that reading was like wow, that's, yeah. that's getting married at the head and the tear in the temple. The God is like, you'll, you'll be going to war if that's what you want to do on your wedding day. Like, literally going to war. So, Yeah, so I did, after that, I did two readings. Please comment on, you know, but all of this is like, you know, am I supposed to be here? You know? So I did a reading. Please comment on my purpose of being in Osiris set. And I get YJ to my, YJ to my 33 into 12. It limits your dependency you know, pretty much the retreat hexagram, which is blowing my mind because I'm like, I'm, you know, this is where I thought this is the place I'm supposed to be. And that 12th hexagram comes up. So yeah. I say, am I the inferior person? Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe, you know, maybe it's me. I got white Jedi yo. you know, so I ask God, please comment on my perception that I'm the inferior person, you know, pretty much in this reading. And it's Amen Temai Osir Tim Chayez 55 into 45. And one of the lines talked about in 55, you want to go read them yourself, that a person's talents are not being used properly. And it goes into 45. My talents are not being used properly to serve the community, which is what I want to do. I, this person knows, Ron Nefra, I'm in, knows from my counsels that I've been studying medical Qigong. I'm really into Qigong. I told my counselor, it's been my conversations with a lot of the men. In fact, I even vibed with one of the men from both of our interests and medical qigong people know i do you know my work people know i'm serious about it so when i saw that and saw that my talents were not being used properly it was just like you know okay you know maybe when we have a child you know we, we were i think we had just conceived maybe when we have a child you know uh things will get better and of course it didn't but that's when stuff really 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 hit the fan at not only in our parenting readings, the Geb Tem comes up again. For both of us. For both of us. And then the naming ceremony, right? This is a ritual. This is a place that's supposed to be a purified, sacred place. And Shekin Kinti allows Ra uh, Ram Rama Heru to come in and say, first of all, if somebody is having mental issues, they don't have quote unquote executive function and control over their actions, including their mouth and their behavior. Why are they even allowed at a ritual? And with all the sexual harassment that, that she has gone through, why would this person even be allowed into the ritual? Like he's gonna come with good intentions, you know? So he comes in and pretty much tries to say that, oh, I don't have fellowship and I, I just wanted, th and it, it, it was so disrespectful and out of place and to the point where everybody who's watching this has been on a Zoom call where you're like, when are they going to mute this person? When is he going to mute this person? When is he going to... when is he, this person. Yeah, or get him out of here. Right. And he comes, Shekin Kinti comes with, oh, it's so... Oh, right, my hair rule, you know, no. It's just like, you spoke you're to Trying to reason with someone yeah, who you say is beyond reason. It's beyond reason. In the middle of a ceremony. name Where everybody is psychically open, taking this sense of their spirit this energy, right, that this person's putting out because they're not putting out positive energy. They're pulling out jealousy, malice, anger, or whatever else is going on there. And this person will be the protector of the ritual. And even in my own personal interactions with him, it's very clear that he doesn't want to speak. I've gone to him just for information about simple stuff. Hey, I want to learn about the Shemsu Heru and his body language and the tension is just... And after that naming ceremony, it was just like, okay, that's it, you know, because I know that if I was, you know, anyone, any, else. anyone else, 
that that would not have happened. You right. know, that would not have happened. You know, so. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, um, we both like accepting things the way they are for a while. You know, there were, there was some new fellowship that, you know, sprung up out of this that I was just very hopeful for because, you know, they came through and just, you know, who you are, just being very supportive and kind of like giving me that support when previous people that I had previously leaned on were showing signs of, you know, being usurped, whether it was just, you know, yeah. it's like a group energy. You have to have reading, a lot of, and it was in the reading, you yeah. have to have a lot of, you know, Heru, you have to have that energy when it's a fog and the group is kind of going in a certain way not to go that way. And, you know, there were people who were, for some reason, they just, they weren't in that fog and really like supported us. And my hope was kind of like, okay, I can kind of build a new, um, and, you know, something I've had to meditate on that I feel like those relationships, I'll never really see the potential, but it was kind of like the supporters that we did have, they would be eventually, it's like the energy yeah. is so, you know, that yeah. they would eventually kind of turn where you're yeah. like, uh, and then the readings and God would confirm like, you know, another one yeah. bites the dust. and. Yeah. People that you really, that, you know, particular person that, you know, really opened up with, like, thought they were family. They said they were family. And it's just like, you know, the, um, you know, and even lack of circumspection and partiality on my part. Like, really, if you see this happening, the readings are saying it, it's only a matter of time with certain people, you know, and it's, it's not, um, it's not personal, you know, yeah. it's not personal. So I also want to say that about the reading about my talents not being used. During my medical Qigong training, with my last teacher that I had, I, it's interesting, I had the same Tahuti Hatep 55, but the line said that my talents would be awakened. And, you know, training this way for years helped me to not just be more sensitive to the energy, but it would drive home that this negative energy is coming to you, this negative energy is coming here. And not just the sensitivity, but the the lessons and the responsibility of if you're doing qigong, if you're working out, if you're if you're doing this and being careful of those thoughts and doing that work to get rid of those thoughts, that there's a major responsibility contrary to the population. Now, this training also led me to see these dark energies coming from specific people in my not just my Wei Chi field or aura, but my son. And when I saw it in my son, that's when it really hit the fan. And I tried to be in doubt of it because once again you want to paint people as this impartial or high beings that they are you know but i was doing a medical qigong treatment or energy medicine treatment on my son and i saw the face in a i saw a dark bubble in the face of raul nefar men in my son's way chi field saw another image of checking by Ken and these were not night these were not pretty smiling faces yeah in his where his lungs were and of course meditated like no nah, 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 that's me I'm projecting that you know and of course my chef said no it's not my teacher one of my medical Qigong teachers already told me like if somebody is sending told me a specific situation of someone being quote unquote juju or hexed and how you can pick it up right. in that person's aura field Mm -hmm. And of course, when I purified this energy out of him, what was really interesting is that he slept longer yeah. and his responses to me personally were very different. I'm around him all the time. You know, he loved his mother, he loved his father, but it was to a point where for those two days, he did not really, you know, he was walking away from you and oh, I'm going to be, it, you, you can see that there was a noticeable change. He also yeah. started to gain yeah. weight. Yeah. You know, his behavior changed, yeah. you know, and it was just like, you know, what more confirmation mm. do you do you really need? And, you know, what for me, it was just like, why would you? And I don't I'm not saying that it's conscious, you know, it's, it's completely conscious because many most of it and a lot of it could be very unconscious. But it's like my child is not even safe here. You know, right. you could do what you want to do to me. I'm a warrior. I'm going to fight. I'm going to build myself. I'm going to get back up. People that know me know that even if you had me down for a little bit. 
in that right. place that I was in, you know, I'm going to come back. You know, that's just, that's me. That's my character, you know, but my child is involved. You know, you're already affecting my wife, but now my child is involved. And it's just like, you know, it, it, it's, it's a no, no. Yeah. It's, it's it's not acceptable, and it was it's just interesting how he looks like me. You know, he oh, he yeah. looks like both God of us. Sure God that. made sure he would look more like me, and it's just like how could can people really separate that energy? Well, there was one family who did. You know, I'm very thankful for them, but it doesn't seem like most people did. You know, okay. and of course yeah. we we even moved closer to people thinking that there would be more of a community and there wasn't you know and what what made it not worse but helped me put things in perspective is that three three men had called me you know three men my age called me from the community to congratulate me for having a child right you know formalities and things like that and i'm thankful for it right but it's always great talking to a particular two of them because they love to brag about themselves and they love to boast about themselves. And at the same time, they will tell you what other members and how they're treated. And I know everybody doesn't get treated the same way. I had to learn that from a very young age with my mother. But to hear, you know, one people, you know, particular person saying, oh, you know, this Shekamu called me, that Shekamu called me, and this person, you know, they congratulated me and, and I received nothing. I received nothing. and No, you did. You received when uh, Ron Neframan said, oh, you're a pops. And oh, oh, I at, at that, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. don't even have the... You won't even call me out tough. To call him and you can tough. You can feel like, it. Oh, we didn't talk about the marriage part, right? What marriage and the, part? And the marriage license. No, oh. but I'll share this part. Um, so, you know, by now, like, he knows what's going on. I've shared everything yeah, and yeah. it's just yeah, and it's yeah. like, but we, I, I didn't i didn't really know the romantic whatever some stuff i might have picked up i really picked it up more from the other men i didn't pick it up so much from him just because i was like no he's above that right so i didn't really find out until the romantic whatever stuff until this year earlier this year and of course once i heard it, it clicked this is why the readings are what they're. This is why he acts the way he acts towards me because he wanted her in his family. He thought that for sure she was going to be in his family, you know. So, getting your marriage life. Yeah. So, getting married, doing readings on just you know, pay someone to come. Um, any of the scenarios going to the justice of the peace, mm -hmm. but God is literally like, no, go you, to him. You have to go to him and just. And to be at peace with yeah. doing it. It was and a double amen open reading. It was a 38 hexagram, which is part of my reading for how to function with him. One of the lines was the same as it was stressed. And obviously, you know, hearing, it was a real amen crossroads, hearing that this person has this romantic, they did these things, which I feel like is abuse of power. You know, a, a vulnerable woman comes to you, you know, she wants a family and you're making statements about, you know, um, I can help you remember and, and all the, and you know, all these other things, um, conduct wise. And I'm like, that's an abuse of, abuse of power. And, and it just driving home all of the ways that he's acted towards me. Meanwhile, I'm thinking he's being partial or I'm carrying with me for years. Something's wrong with me. Maybe I was a bad person in another life and he just knows that because he knows everything and I'm a horrible person and whatever, whatever. And, and you know, I meditated obviously on that reading and it was just like, you know, everything ain't about you. Maybe this is about God showing him something that he got to eat his words, you know, because when I told him, when I told him I was going to marry her his response was you know and whatever else things that he said about me or leaked to other people well he got to sign a marriage certificate now so on so i called him that friday i called him on a friday and said hey you know um we got just got married i need you know to sign a marriage license um i would like to come next friday at this time and he said well why gotta be that day that time and i was just like well you know she's not gonna be at work you know we can come at that day excuse me and he said, well, um, you know, why I got to be that time? I said, well, whatever time you want, whatever time you want. Oh, come at three. Okay. 
call me the day before to make, this is what he said, call me the day before to make, you know, to remind me. I call him the day before, my call gets forwarded to voicemail. And I'm like, well, you know what? This is a busy man, right? Even though, like, just inside, I'm like, mm, something's there, right? But maybe he's busy, right? Next day, I'm texting him, like, just to confirm, like, because he, he, he never reached back out. And he calls her. Yeah, he calls me and he's like, uh, you know, only one of you have to really show up. And, and I'm just like, you know, when is the undermining going to stop? Because obviously now we're like five years into our relationship. We have a child and it's just like, just stop with the pettiness. And the, the pettiness, it honestly, it just, it never stopped. And I don't think it ever would have stopped um, had we continue to stay there and I think it's just accepting reality but it's just a major lesson not only for us what we're sharing because I know that there are many other people who might have dark deceased in their IO or Wajed and or Mayus or a fourth hexagram and may just really have this concrete thinking that like I'm always the problem or you know my conduct is always and I said Wajed I did or you did or you just gone home you're zealous and you don't know and yeah and it's just like okay really you have to meditate and really ask yourself like who is who who is doing what because you know had 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 I told my like new to Sarasset self, like the story of how things would transpire and what would happen, like I would have been incredulous. Like there's no way, you know, there's no way. And, but you know, this is, this is what has happened. And I just want to share that like a confirmation for us, um, about all of the, I mean, we, we experienced oh, yeah, it. We, we experienced had, we, we had it. A, we had a neck of bed to my eye, dark disease to my eye for staying in New York, yeah. 49 hexagram. God is like, get up out of there and get up out of there. In fact, we didn't know if God was saying it need to be a revolution in our thinking or a revolution in changing the situation. No, we did know. We did know. When we got that, we did know. Well, I'm saying after meditation and going to our chefs, okay. we, you know, it's like, get out of yeah, there. Yeah, I yeah, because I get what you're saying. Like, there was so long that we were like, oh, you know, be in New York and, you know, make a way here and really contribute to this community and build up this community. Yeah. And that was like we, our singular focus. And I remember... You know, Chef Saima sharing like you really thought about like you put the community, you know, um, you know, you thought about them, but maybe it's time for you to really think about your family and moving here. The confirmation on where we live now, Geb to my eye, Chef's to my eye, twenty four straight up. So really like the compliment of that reading and really just showing that like even though we've moved somewhere where we don't you know have a support network but just knowing that God is already saying you know that the support will be here just to live truth and you know continue doing what we're doing but getting counsel I, from our chefs and following our ancestral ways right. which is something we both made a commitment to do and i thought that commitment excuse me will help me to be accepted and at many times it appears from just conversations with a particular brother there that it was just incur more jealousy because it's like you're a threat you know i'm a threat because i'm serious about this or whatever or i'm a threat to their position that they have or their future um position and yeah it's just you know once again the the environment is of you must come here and you must listen to this person and if you don't you're you're, you're sahu and you're unreceptive and it's like well i did that I, I gave you know and not gay trying to really get anything i'm not going to say that it was just pure not trying to get anything in return because yeah i definitely was looking for a family but i gave and you know even the lack of, um, because some of the things I found out that were being said about me was about, you know, um, this person's not man enough or, you know, this, this crazy stuff. This person's not man enough or they're, they're, you know, they don't have this, they don't have that. And it really caused me to reflect on the men there, you know, the men there and what's going on. And it wasn't just their, um, it wasn't just readings or feeling like they were insincere or listening to how they spoke about their wives. But it was also like, the this is, this is the example, this is what they're saying is the example of, of Heru, 
you know? Yeah. I, I saw a lot of Sebek, you know? I saw a whole lot of joking, laughing, you know? Um, and I want to say to them, even, even interacting with them sometimes was very hard when I saw how they interacted with each other, you know, the way they spoke to each other, jo even jokingly, and, and the, what I would term is disrespect, you know, from where, I, where, where I've come from. Like, you, you don't talk to another man like that, you know? And yeah, um, and whenever I would ask about what the issues were in Osiris said, why, where were the men? There weren't too many men there. It would always be the same statement that the men, oh, the people, the men are not here because, you know, women are more receptive and men just left. And it would be like, why Why is it that everybody who left here or is not here is painted as the Sahu person, painted as the bad person? Like, it would just be strange to me when I would hear that narrative, yeah. you know, so. Definitely. So, you know, as we said in the beginning of, this very long video, but as you can see, these are things that we needed to share, mandated by God to share. So I guess we should share now like our reading for leaving, um, for leaving Osiris mm -hmm. said. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that too, but okay. um do you wanna share that reading? The reading for leaving Osiris? Yes. Said? The reading for leaving Osir says, Herkuti Tuchai is... For our family leaving. For our family leaving. Herkuti Tuchai is Heru Tuma'at. Four into 35. Rapid progress. And the lines... <laughs> you know, if looking at the interpretation of the I Ching written by the Shechem Shechem, there's the line about tolerating people and, you know, youthful behavior in people. And then there's the line that says, you know, spare no... Spare, spare nothing. Tell this person what it is, and what what it what, what it needs to be, you know. And for those that would try to argue and try to say, well, you know, we're being the youthful folly. I think if you reflect on the situation as it has, as we have presented itself, as we have presented things, I think you will see that we are not the youthful folly. And in fact, the fourth hexagram also talks about reeducation, and it talks about the teacher being there. So. And the fact that it goes into 35, I think, really speaks volumes for itself yes. about, like, you know, Natera saying, this is not the place uh, for you. Right. You know, and when you read other um, interpretations of some of those lines, it speak, you know, that line that we got, it speaks about being delusional, you know, and things not being, you know, you, you think things are a certain way, but they're really not. And I would say that that was a major hetero, you know, kind of issue that we had there, you know. What we and a Tahuti thing as well, what I want to be there versus what is actually occurring, yeah. And just some other community wide things that I want to mention, um, is the the worship, even though um, Ron Nefron Man says out of his mouth not to worship him, the worship of him contributes to yeah. his feeling that he is above the law or can act in. A decadent manner and have no repercussion and it, it also interferes i've seen him and his family have a disproportionate amount of responsibility financial responsibility and even time wise and just everything but it definitely begs the question like okay you you want you know this just total deference but it really is interfering with people's ability to like assert their hair and really step up to the responsibilities that would take, you know, some of the load off of you and off of your family. And, you know, there's also, there's just, there's no checks and balances. And how long can someone just have absolute power before it corrupts? I mean, especially that's just saying, not in the a, African community. There's right. All these elders and African and advisors in the African right. community. Right. Um, the demeaning speech of Raul Nefram and I've witnessed it many times where it, like something inside me is like, you know, is that you have authority and people respect you. Do you need to, you know, denigrate someone publicly or, you know, be demeaning with your speech. And I, I've seen it countless times and I know that other people have seen it. And I know that like, even though they have on their, their, their robes of just, you know, deference that they know that it's not right, you know? And um, 
the xenophobia, it, it really, it, it blocks the blessing of newcomers. You don't really know who's walking through the door. So having this uh, attitude that like, yeah. you know, people of superior character and, you know, spiritual maturity are here and yeah. whoever's and are coming born and yeah. are born here because yeah. both of us are not born into, yeah. you know, but we are like champions of, you know, our tradition, which yeah. we still practice. Like our son, he knows the chance, he's okay? Walking, he's walking around, around trying to purify everything. Purify like, and he's going to grow up that way. So yeah. it's like, um, just don't negate. And I even think, you know, I'm going to get into this in, in our in our recommendations, but um, there's this major idea that, you know, Sarah said of sharing, as promoted by Ron Neframan, and um, I don't disagree with this idea. It's the idea that, you know, you share through an uplifted character, like you want to help people like uplift yourself and you will, you know, attract people who need your help and all of those things. And I am in total agreement with that. But I do see, you know, um, that there is not a lot of community outreach and it kind of perpetuates the superiority complex. And it's like I just think of simple things like if we're experts on nutrition we could have something that's not about you being in our religion, just trying to serve the community, just being more community involved that I think would help just because sometimes it really feels like, okay, there's a big disconnect between yeah. Osiris said and the local community and, you know, world. what's going on in the world, how people are thinking that that has been our experience. Um, no, um, the lack of confidentiality with counsel many people have complained and you know we've heard Ron Neframan broadcast people's business in PNM countless times other people not even feeling comfortable you know going to council saying you know well if I go then everyone's gonna know and this is something I want to keep close to my chest and it's it's a real issue that there is not confidentiality in council um no consistent criteria for membership or leadership roles leaves room for favoritism. And I know that as, you know, spiritual society, like readings and, you know, maybe some intangible things have to be considered, but that doesn't mean that there can't be like a residency requirement. If you want to apply for membership, you know, this many hours of classes and not, you know, making the requirements attainable. Because I know there were times where there were people who wanted membership and it would be like, well, this is what you have to do, but it's not even available. And it's just like, you know... That that's just something I think that will really benefit Osiris set and in its future. Um, and no maintenance requirement for the Sheka move, you know. Or, or yeah, I said I said leadership. I said I said regular membership yeah. and for leadership, including yeah. um, whoever is the Shechem or Shechem. You know, it, that's the African that's way. The African you had way, to dude. continually, continually you know, prove your readiness, your willingness, your ability to serve. It wasn't just this lifetime appointment. We see what happens with lifetime appointments, you know, with our Supreme Court. Like, that should not be, you know. So, um, our recommendations is that a council of elders needs to be established. And by elders, I'm not thinking of, oh, you have to be 80 years old to serve but people who have a proven record and, you know, there can be requirements for that. They can write, have to write up a reading or have, you know, be able to have proof of like living truth in a major crossroad or whatever it is. Um, people being able to communicate with their chef suit, what, whatever those requirements are. But I feel like this, us coming out publicly this way could have been avoided if there was a venue for us to go and say, you know what? check this person because they're out of line and hold them accountable and there was nowhere for us to go. Um, a community-wide initiative to attract and cultivate men for the many unmarried women is, yes, is and, and, and what I, long overdue. And what I have to say about that too is like eventually, and I think the reading show that I shared, there's a realization that there really wasn't, there, I, there really wasn't like I wasn't. There really wasn't a uh, uh, an effort to try to help me, right? If the things that I said about me, if I'm decadent, right, then I'm in the right place, right? I'm spiritual. Give me the teachings. Share with me. Counsel me, right? If my finances are off and I'm and I'm uh, I'm I'm freeloading, 
you know, offer, then help me find a job, help me get fine. And all those resources are there. And it, and one of the brothers, he slipped, he didn't even slip up. You know, he said it in a conversation at a party, like, oh, I'm, I, I got this boy here and this boy there. And I'm like, this guy is telling me all the time, if you need anything, I'll help. But you got all these connections. And you've never said anything. And, and, and yeah, like the community needs men. But what are the processes that you're going to uplift the men that are coming in that are there if you really want these women to be married because they really do need to get married, deserve to get married? Yeah. And I think that connects what we're saying, like uh, some kind of welcoming committee. committee or process or even, you know, like when I have new students come into my classroom, you get a buddy, you know, who knows the the lay of the land who can you know sit with you at lunch while you're making you know getting to know people and just that basic um hospitality like as african people you know yeah. what does john henry clark say we've been too hospitable we've like been too hospitable. we've been yeah. too hospitable but it, there is like there's no hospitality in osiris said yeah. and it's and then the people who might approach you are coming with a superiority mentality right you're from, you know you right. weren't born here or you're from the outside so you, you right. must be decadent Right. And I think a part of that um, welcoming into the community, and I'm not saying it should happen because you came around three days, but someone's been around, you know, a year, however long, but they should have a history meditation, you know, like they should have their name energized by the community, just different things that you can do. And it is the nature that people are going to come and go. And I think that you know, I've heard that, well, so many people have come and go, gone, that people are very defensive and they don't really want to let their guard down and all these things. But it's just like, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. And right now, Osara said is not growing. So be open to, you know, the people that God is sending your way. Like, right, right, view right, them right, as, right. as a blessing, I'm each person. An and like if me. someone is there for a season and leaves, that that is what it is. But mm -hmm. at least you know you've done, you know, your part. Um, to further that person, and yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not. I'm not being arrogant, but like the line said, like you know, your talents are not being used. Yeah, you know, no, they they really they really they really are not. And um, so yeah, just to conclude this very long video, um, we're not ones to criticize without without making an effort to be a part of the solution. But this video is our contribution to the solution. Um, even before sharing this, these vid this video, which we know is now, I mean, it's not going to really change anything, honestly, but now maybe people will be more vocal and external about their disdain for us. Um, staying in Osiris set was not an option for our family based on the corruption, based on the psychic toxicity. And it just was not a safe or nourishing place for our family. And I know that we're both leaving with a light heart because we benefited greatly from the positive aspects of the community. And we also contributed, you know, devotedly. So I carry my chefs from the young man. You, I mean, we don't have to name every way, but we contributed, you know, and, and sincerely. And um, I, was, I will say that consider this our exit interview because we, we, wouldn't, wouldn't, get get one. One. we wouldn't get one. It would just be said that we left because we're decadent. Okay. Um, we're Sahu, we don't want to follow. And we don't understand our readings. We don't understand any of our readings. Um, there would be really no effort to learn from our experiences here to improve the community for its current and future members. So, you know, based on the details we've shared, you can see that Osiris said has not been meeting our needs as a family. And, you know, the reading that we shared on leaving, you, you know, like, go within because there is just so much conflict of interest like it's up to you who have the ability to go within you speak know to speak to your chefs you know don't just go with this knee-jerk response of like oh you know this is an attack on our community no this is like help this to the gift. community this is a gift who else is doing who would do it you know and it's just you know like yeah. that is that is what it is. Um, if you're going to, if in truth you say you live by the word of God, you know, honor the readings. Yeah. Um, Ron Neframan's interpretation of the readings and the situation are a deep conflict of interest. So, and so are honestly many of many of the people in a high position. So, you know, um, 
go within, meditate, purify yourselves, you do your purification, talk with your chepsu just before like adopting this knee-jerk defensive posture um, at all costs. And just defend truth, you know, defend God, um, defend the shepsu whose shoulders we stand upon. And for those of you who had the eyes to see and, you know, showed us as a family genuine care, concern, goodwill, even through all of the slander, all of the undermining, um, you were truly a light in the darkness for us, like, honestly. And it's really a shame that our relationship couldn't really play out fully because of us having to, you know, remove ourselves to give ourselves that just fresh, energetic start. And, um, you know, we are definitely, we're going to miss you greatly, but we thought about it and it's like, we, we can't ask people after coming out and sharing the things that we've shared to be, you know, we want the people who are in Osiris to stay there and really work on the issues that, you know, if any of these issues have merit, work on these issues and really make it a place that is better, not just for newcomers, but for your own families, like really do that. So, um, we, we don't have hard feelings. It's just, we accept what it is. And some of you are going to realize that you were, you know, usurped and that, you know, a lot of the feelings and negative energy or whatever that you had toward my mate or toward our family were not really a hundred percent of your own making. And that's fine. Like don't recriminate at all. We, we forgiven you. We're like so eager, even just doing this video to like, just move forward on our new path and, you know, to see what God has for us. And, um, the last thing is, you know, if this to you, ask yourself, is this an emotional rampage? Is this a revenge video? Um, <laughs> because of hurt feelings or is it that the issues really do have merit and would Osara set benefit from correcting these issues? And if the answer is yes, like you have your, you know how to move. So that's, that's really all. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Uh, just that pretty much what you said through, through it all. I'm very thankful because it, I had to learn a lot of things about myself. I had to connect my Shep Su. I had to really. Sorry, I forgot about something I want to share last thing. I, I had to really live and really do my spiritual work, you know, to the best of my abilities. And even when I didn't see things happening, not doubt you know, God, not doubt the word of God, not doubt that I'm be, even with a counselor and following exactly what she told me, you know, following, doing the readings, doing the write-ups and knowing that, you know, there's something more than just, well, my blessings are not manifesting. There's more to this, but I'm truly thankful. Everything serves to further and, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. very thankful to move forward. And I just have to share, I know there's people who are going to be genuinely happy for me to hear this. But since deciding to leave Osiris, said, since moving, I've met one of my chefs by name. And, you know, I'm just, she's beautiful. And I'm just really, it, it just really goes to like confirm if I had any doubts that it's like, oh, you're going down the dark path and, you know, confirm with readings. And, you know, she's from my matrilineal side and just you know i'm just really overjoyed about that because it's just a confirmation that like god has given me at this time like no walk the path that you're on like people are going to say what they have to say but the proof is in the pudding so um you know thank you round nefra men for again for the work because it, us even understanding that it's for us to move on wouldn't have happened without us using your work but yes it, it is up to you to really uplift your conduct and to uplift the community as a whole so that's you know well, it's not only on him because no needs, no he no needs a lot of help yeah he needs no 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 i didn't mean yeah. mean him alone i no. just meant like you know, do better and don't accept or try to stand on your authority when you're wrong. So, all right. Don't want to tear. <laughs>